Hi, everybody, and welcome again to a wonderful new episode in the Alchemy Lab with me, Colm Holland. I'm the author of a book called The Secret of the Alchemist. That's me, Colm Holland. And I'm so pleased to welcome you here today because my guest and I have known each other for a little while. And um, she very, very kindly invited me on her podcast not so long ago. And I'm thrilled that to be able to return the compliment. Um, let's say a very, very, very quick hello to Kelly Sparta. Hello, Kelly. Um, Hi, Callum. Lovely to see you today. Um, and for those of, of you who are not familiar with Kelly, um, we met because we share something that is very close to the real heart of alchemy, and that is everything to do with transformation the personal um, transformation that um, is is really engineered and encouraged by unconditional love permeating our lives. And Kelly, I have to say, has been a practitioner of this a lot longer than I have. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping to learn, um, learn from Kelly today. So if, if you're not familiar with Kelly, I'm going to introduce her quickly. Um, she, um, her clients call her the Sharma Mama, um, <laughs> and I think it's because her, her caring and nurturing energy just oozes out from whenever, whenever I speak to her. And also, um, I have met several of her clients, and yes, they agree that um, she offers a lot of compassion and nurturing love. So. Um, she identifies herself, however, as a daring adventurer, a comic, uh, sorry, a comic, a cosmic. <laughs> sometimes comic. Sometimes yes. comic. <laughs> cosmic, yes, girl. Um, healer, psychic, channel, medium, empath, lifelong entrepreneur, which is quite unique um, to have all these things combined. Um, and many different types of businesses under your belt over the years. And, and I'm sure you're going to tell us a bit about that. Um, a hardcore spiritual seeker who has many times over given up everything in pursuit of, of spiritual growth. And that's one of the things that you and I share so strongly in common is that there have come those moments where we've said, yes, I am going to take the risk. I'm not just going to sit back comfortably. I'm going to begin again. Um, and those are the amazing transformational moments that, that happen yeah. when we, we say yes to that. But she is also, and I'm saying this, an amazing connector, community builder and networker. Thank you for all the connections, Kelly, that, that you've um, managed to bring in, in my direction. But also a master manifester. And you do name the law of attraction. And I do want to talk to you about the law of attraction in particular. Um, and you, that you use that to create your reality. And I just love that phrase, creating your reality. Also, a singer, a songwriter, a poet, and a writer, just as well. As a, as all this, I think. Must be a Renaissance woman. <laughs> a rena that was it. That was, the, that was the word I was looking for earlier. Thank you for coming on my uh, podcast. Thanks for coming into the Alchemy Lab. We've got a few concoctions going on over in the corner here, um, which we'll talk about later. Um, you're not going to get away without offering some ingredients to one of my special recipes here. I'd be thrilled. Now, I, I want to, um, people can find you on your website, by the way, which is Kelly Sparta, K E L L, -L E, sparta.com. Um, and on there, you say that you can help people by showing them how to finally break free from your challenged childhood and learn to love yourself magically with a C and a K, um, yeah. how to claim your space, how to set your boundaries, own your power, and never have to ask for validation ever again. Can you please explain how all that works, Kelly? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, uh, it is a uh, process, 
obviously, because, you know, when you, when you start out in a challenged childhood, and, and let me just define challenged childhood for a second, because a lot mm. of people are like, well, what does that mean? What it means is that you felt un emotionally unsafe. Sometimes physically, some people will be physically unsafe too, but emotionally unsafe is the critical factor uh, in your childhood. Mm. And so that could be that you had overly critical parents, narcissistic parents, alcoholic parents, neglectful parents, uh, you know, any, any number of reasons you could have been the black sheep of the family. There's a lot of reasons why you can feel emotionally unsafe. You could be a military brat like I was and move all the time and then be, you know, the, the new kid in town and picked on and bullied and that would do it too, you know, all of those things. And so needless to say, based on what I've just said, there's a lot of people who fit that criteria, right? Sure. And so, you know, when you do that, what happens is there's this whole uh, tapestry of coping mechanisms that come into play mm -hmm. and they they get woven together like a safety blanket around you in your childhood and and they keep you safe in your dysfunctional environment but over time you've got this thing wrapped tight around you but you keep growing and it gets tighter and tighter and tighter and eventually you leave your dysfunctional environment and now you're living in the straight jacket of your coping mechanisms oh, I love and they're that. no longer functional right yes and yeah and so the the key there is you have to the what happens is people go looking for a solution and they try to pull a thread at a time. They take a class here and read a book mm -hmm. there and whatever. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, is that it's a tapestry. It's, it's woven cloth. So you pull one thread, it's only going to pull so far before it snags on everything else. Right? So you literally have to unravel the entire thing all at once to truly get out of it. Wow. And <clears throat> that's why my people have such a hard time. They go to therapy. And it works for a little bit, but then it stops working or it never works at all, <laughs> depending on what they started with. Um, and, and a lot of that's because most therapy uses the Socratic method. And so the, the therapist is trying to lead you someplace. But when the therapist is looking at the world from a very different perspective than you are, which they always are in this scenario, then their directions aren't going to make any sense. And my clients tend to get really frustrated and they're like, just give me the answer you're trying to get me to because I don't know where you're going. And that's the difference, right? Is that um, I, I give people the answer because I understand that they don't see the world the same way. And I'm like, look, here's the deal. I know that you see the world this way, but let's, turn your perspective upside down and sideways mm. and and let me get you to the point where you see the world the way everybody else does and then the world will make more sense to you and you will be less hurt by it and that is huge right and not to say that i don't have people come to their own conclusions on things because there is a lot of that but for the perspective piece, it literally, you just need to be told, no, this is, this is not this way. I know you see it this way, but it's this way. And, and then your brain goes, huh, what? <laughs> and you're just like, oh, I can't figure. Your brain hurts while you're trying to put everything into context again. You're just like, ah. And then, then it clicks and you go, oh, I get it. And, and suddenly everything changes and it cascades, it cascades out. So, um, it's a combination of factors. You know, you have to unravel those coping mechanisms. You have to shift the perspective. But in the end, the, the goal is to individuate, right? It's to, to give yourself a solid foundation to feel comfortable in your own skin. And that's what allows you to, to be free from all the anxiety and the worry mm. and the stress and the dread and the angst and the upset that that comes along with these coping mechanisms. So um, the other challenge that my people have is that they tend to try and pull all, they tend to try and remove their triggers before they solidify as people. And that's oh, never going to work either. Okay, you need to explain. First of all, um, you mentioned the word individuation. Mm -hmm. And now you're using the word triggers. Yes. So let's just unpack some of that because I'm sure not, you know, I mean, I'm sure many of our listeners and viewers know what you mean, but for those who, who maybe need a bit more clarification around that, what, what do you mean? So individuation is the process of becoming separate from others 
And when we feel unsafe in our childhood, we tend to have very codependent mechanisms where we, okay. we put others ahead of ourselves. The other person becomes more important in our lives than we are. For and example, a parent, a sibling. Yeah, so somebody who needs to be managed, right? Somebody who could get mm -hmm. upset. And so you're, you're constantly changing your way of being around them, right? And most of my people are empaths. So they feel what other people feel and they get overwhelmed by other people's strong emotions. And so, that's actually a function of that codependency, but it's an energetic version of it. Okay, and codependency, just to clarify, and the, the whole name individuation comes from Carl Jung's um, theory of, of psychoanalysis of, of, of how the psyche works. Just, okay, got it. Yes. Triggers, what are, what are triggers? So triggers are the things that, that somebody says that sends you flying. <laughs> it's like somebody pushes a button and you go, ah! you know, zero to 150 in five seconds flat, two seconds flat, you know, it's just, and, and you're way overreacting, right? You, it's like somebody spilled some milk and you're just like down their throat, right? <laughs> you're just like, ah, and that's a trigger. It's like when your response is out of proportion to whatever it was that was done, you are triggered. And so we often go looking for ways to get rid of the triggers before we get solid as ourselves. And the problem is that on an energetic level, when you are not individuated, what happens, so having a challenged childhood stretches your container. So it's really actually very good for you if you're trying to do any sort of energy work. And so that's why so many energy workers choose challenging environment childhoods. And so it stretches your container. And that what that means is that it stretches your capacity to hold and endure and survive, right? And that stretching of the container also holds more energy. The problem is that in the process of stretching it, it also tears holes in it, it tears, rips in it. And it becomes a very in thin it. membrane, yes. They're very thin membrane. And mm. so that creates the lack of individuation because you're constantly leaking energy and taking energy in from others. And, and there's no real separation between you and other people. Yeah. And so the boundaries are, are really not good. And so when you solidify the container, you, you solve that problem. But up until then, when you're trying to do work on your triggers, it just, you you build the energy up and then it just all leaks out so it's really not possible to hold the energy long enough to do the work on the triggers and that's why people fail when they try to do that first and so that's why it's so important to solidify that container so where do they start i've been listening to this um i've heard what kelly's just said um wow this is ringing some bells um this all makes sense. It coincides with something I've read recently, et cetera, et cetera. Um, wh which is step one. I, presumably we've got to, if we're going to go down this road of individuation, we've got to do it in baby steps. Yes. Um, otherwise you know, we, we could either wreck ourselves completely uh, on the rock. Yeah. So what's step which, one? Yeah. Where do so, you begin? So the first step is to find emotional safety. Okay. okay, because until you feel safe emotionally, you will resist any change process. Mm -hmm. Because in order to change, as I'm sure you've probably told people, you have to get out of your comfort zone. <laughs> oh, really? I would never say that to anybody. <laughs> I, I have a saying with my students, I'm like, if, if you're not uncomfortable, you're not doing anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and so, you know, when you feel uncomfortable and you're feeling also emotionally unsafe, you will defend against that discomfort and discharge all of the energy that you could use to grow mm -hmm. in anger and outbursts. Yeah. Yeah. And so the very first step is to find the emotional safety and that requires addressing your fears and your worries and your judgments and your and both inner and outer judgments, right? Mm. Your dreads and your self doubts and your, and, and to really start to build a sense of self support and courage. 
And that process is the process of finding emotional safety. Um, and, you know, that's the very first program that I run in my, in my process. Got it. Yeah, it's called Inner Peace 101. Inner Peace 101. And that then is the beginning of a foundation for a place of safety to go and in a way reconnect presumably then with the damaged child or yeah. children um, that live within what they live within our unconscious, the unconscious part of our psyche. Um, in my book, I talk about facing the dragon. Mm, Are we kind yes. of talking about the same thing here? If that dragon um, is angry or it's breathing fire and it's making unwelcomed visitations into yeah. our day-to-day -day existence, is that, is that the similar the, thing? It's a little bit further along in the process. Okay. Um, but yeah, we do cover that. It is, it is part of that. Um, the the beginning phase is really more about our survival mechanisms on overdrive right it's our self-preservation on overdrive sure. and so it's hyper vigilance and it's you know a lot of you know the assumption that anything coming at you is an attack and yes. so you know it's like i'm going to attack back before it hits me <laughs> Like, oh, I can't think of any politicians who behave like that. Let me just oh, think. No, oh, no, of course not. Mm, I don't know any of those. No, I, don't I, can't US think of I, I can't tell you. No. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, that's, okay, that's I get how it. the process works. Yeah. Okay, I get it. And the, and the name of the course, what's the overarching name of the course? Well, so it's, my course comes in, in three parts. So it's Inner Peace 101, Finding Emotional Safety, and then it's mastering spiritual evolution mm -hmm. and then mastering inner healing. So in, okay. in the third part of it is we, we dig out all the buttons and the triggers and the, we teach you a process of self inquiry that allows you to be able to do the work on your own going forward. Cause my goal is to, to put you in a position where you don't need me anymore. That's, that's always my goal is to fully empower people to, to be able to process and run their own lives. And uh, ultimately this three-part process is, and I do it within a magical context. So, and, and that's magic. Oh, okay. Now you got my attention. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, well, I mean, we're, we're integrating magical processes. We're doing energetic work on clearing your energy field and processing your energetic boundaries as an empath and, and doing shields for yourself and setting up protections on your home and you know, learning divination processes to be able to communicate with your spirit guides so that they can help lead you and along in the process. And um, there, you know, we teach you manifestation techniques and altars to help structure your intentions and hold mm -hmm. those on a longer scale. And there's a lot, a lot of energy work that we do that is integrated with this process. And in year two, there's actually a proprietary process that my partner Kathy has done. She's also a transformational shaman. And it is specifically designed to amplify that alchemical transformational process that we Oh, I like the sound process. of that. Yes, it's amazing. When she first showed it to me, I was like, oh my God, why haven't we been teaching this? This is amazing. And she was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay. so yeah, that comes in year two. And, and it's all integrated energetically. Um, year two. So this isn't um, a weekend, um, no, no, a, a long weekend away day course. <laughs> okay. No, and and people talk to me. They're like, "Oh my God, it's so long," and I'm like, "But it is 25 years worth of personal growth work in about two and a half, three mm -hmm. years, depending on how long people go in the process. Because mm. not everybody finishes exactly on time because a year is a long time, right? Mm. So." But it is, um, you know, the first first program's four months, and the second program is twelve months, and then the third program is eighteen months. And wow! So, but it's twenty five years worth of personal growth work and magic training. So, so when you say it's twenty five years, that's, that's how long twenty five years <laughs> that you brought. Yes, that's what I was going to ask yeah. you. So that's and and Kathy as well and her experience yeah. and and so on. Okay. 
Yeah, um, and that's, it took me 25 years after being raised in the New Age movement. I started doing personal growth hmm. and development work when I was five years old. I was, I was going to ask you, that's my next question yeah. on the list. Look, I've got questions on a list. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> Tick. Number two, tell us about your personal journey. Oh, what, a wow. what a coincidence. Coincidence. So, so what yeah. was that moment? I'm going to ask two questions in one. Okay. Tell us about the context of the personal journey, but within the context of the personal journey, tell us about one key transformational moment that said, this is it. This is the way it works. And this is where I decided this was going to be my lifetime destiny to share and to bring this to other people, if that's possible. And you've got five minutes to do it in starting, <laughs> starting from now. <laughs> All right, let me see what I can do. So uh, my mother no, said I was do whatever you want. Don't just ignore <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> so my mother said I was talking to ghosts in my crib. She raised me in the New Age movement. She brought Est home when I was five years old, which for those of you old enough to know, that was the precursor to Landmark. Um, and uh, I was doing self-hypnosis by the age of 10, tarot cards by 12, psychic development classes, the whole nine yards. So I grew up, I was, I was inculcated in this. I was just mm. steeped in it, right? And so I had a story that I was going to tell you, but you, you just framed it in a different way. But I'm going to tell you this story anyway. Please. Um, so the, the moment... There, there was one moment that was really significant for me. And I had been to a, a workshop at Harbin Hot Springs, which doesn't exist anymore. It burned down in the fires. But, um, but I was out at Harbin Hot Springs and we were doing a workshop that was not related to the, the Hot Springs community. And so um, I, I had tried to arrange for a private room because I knew I was going to be crying all weekend. And I had, and I couldn't get one. So I was in a uh, a shared dorm space and I had taken the downstairs bed to try and be away from everybody. Right. And this woman came down and woke me up and she said, you're snoring. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm so sorry. I said, here's some earplugs. And she wouldn't take them. <laughs> I said, I brought <laughs> extras. Right. And she, um, and I tried to stay up for 15, 20 minutes. I was exhausted, but I tried to stay up to give her time to go back to sleep. And she came back down and she shook me again. And she said, you're snoring again. You're going to have to find someplace else to be. Now it's the middle of the night. And I looked at her and I said, you chose a shared dormitory experience. This is what it is. Would you like some earplugs? Because I'm going back to sleep. And if you touch me again, I'm going to break your hand. <laughs> she was just Oops. like, I was pissed, right? Uh, and, and she was like, well, and I'm like, you, no, you don't get to tell me I've got to leave in the middle of the night. That's not okay. When there's no place else to go. I mean, it was in the middle of nowhere. Right. Mm. And um, well, there was always the bears in the woods. You could always go. And yeah. Share something them. like that. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, the next day I was out with some of the friends who had been in the workshop with me and we had uh, been in the sauna and there was, it was a four person sauna. There were three of us. And this woman who lives in the hot springs knocked on the door and she was like, are you going to be much longer? And just like really bitchy. Right. And this is supposed to be a really, you know, <laughs> chill retreat space. Right. And she's just like, rah, 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 right. And we, we said, well, we're going to be a while. You're welcome to join us. If you'd like, I'll wait. And she stood outside and, you know, five, seven minutes later, she knocks again. Are you done yet? And we were like, we told you we're going to be a while. If you'd like to join us, you are welcome to. <laughs> and she finally came in and sat down and just started pitching about the workshop we had been attending. Um, you know, just, just filling the room with negativity until finally she drove us out. We were just like, okay, we're done. And so I, I go to breakfast and I'm sitting there and I just arrived and everybody else was just leaving, but they had been boisterous and loud and laughing and, you know, Harbin tends to be a very quiet space. And so they were getting nasty looks. And so I sit down and they all get up and leave. And now I'm getting the nasty looks and I wasn't even there. You know? <laughs> and I'm sitting there 
eating my oatmeal and I'm going, oh my God, I have never felt so unwelcome in my entire, and then I froze and I went, no, I have felt exactly this unwelcome my entire life. Right. And I started to cry into my oatmeal and I mm. looked at my guides and I said, mm. I get it. Right. Mm. In, in shamanic practice, we talk about the waking dream mm -hmm. and the waking mm -hmm. dream being that moment of recognizing the symbols and the patterns that are happening around you. Right. Yeah. yeah. This, this place, which is supposed to be so welcome and warming, you know, warm and, and receiving and, um, and, and it was just not right. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, it's out of context. So it's clearly just for me. Right. And so I'm, I'm, crying into my oatmeal i'm having my experience i told my guys i get it you can stop now um and and i proceeded to finish my oatmeal you know blow my nose and go to the the um they had a silent contemplation hot spring that you could go to and everyone was sitting you know around in the corners and i just sat there in the pool and i was just tears just rolling down my face just releasing it releasing it releasing it and this man i don't know came over and said would you like me to float you while you process hmm. so welcoming right supportive hmm. literally yeah. physically yeah. supportive yeah. as yeah. he's yeah. he's holding me floating in the water hmm. and cradling me in his arms while i'm processing and i was like yes okay so i did turn the corner i did get it my guides you know set me in the right direction and i'm I'm golden now, right? So yeah. it was that moment. And that actually, that moment uh, was the surface layer of the work that it would finally get me to my core wounding, uh, which was not important, right? So it was not welcome, not wanted, not important. Okay. And so I worked my way down, but that was a pivotal turning moment. Oh, me. yeah. Yeah. And um, so, you know, I, I, went on walkabout in 2002, gave away everything I owned, lived on $350 a month and in unemployment insurance and the kindness of strangers. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that is a longer story than you have time for here. <laughs> well, well, we're gonna have to come back to that. Um, have you written this, of the, that walkabout story? Have you written it up? Is it, does it it's, exist? Yeah, it's on my blog. I, okay. I wrote it originally as a live journal, and then that tells you how long ago it was. And, and then I transferred it to my blog with some commentary. Okay. Um, so it's there if you wanna if you wanna look at it. It's wow. the uh, modern day shaman's initiation, is what the the category is called. Okay. So it has the whole journey. Yeah, you've wet everybody's appetite. You're a fabulous storyteller, by the way. <laughs> I see. You. Um, must be the Irish in you as well. It, um, it must be. It must be. So. <laughs> Yeah, but they can go to your blog and they can hear that story. But yeah, that, that's amazing. Um, that is definitely a transformational moment. Um, would you class that, you know, I've got a hang up about miracles and magic. Mm -hmm. Would you class that as a miracle moment? Or do you see, do you, ident do you identify miracles or magic? Because you said earlier that you incorporate magic in your yep. course so just give us a bit of understanding of your interpretation of what what a miracle is or what magic is then so my definition of a miracle is more along the christian construct so okay. um you know when i look at it it feels like um god's intervention you know the deus ex machina right it's the the god and the machine right mm -hmm. and and to me, it feels more like a, um, a, a saving from the outside, you know, that, that comes through. And it, to me, it feels very disempowering because it's a, ah, I can't do it, save me yeah, sort yeah, of yeah, space, yeah. right? Um, whereas I see magic as a, a choice, a focused intent, right? So magic in my definition is a focused intent on a specific outcome, right? Got it. And, um, you know, backed by emotion and energy and all that other stuff. But uh, when you look at it that way, what other people would classify as miracles, I classify as magic because okay. I see it as, so that moment was my willingness to step into my work 
my willingness to recognize what was going on around me that were mm -hmm. messages being sent by my guides who uh, I see our guides as our support team. We're doing okay. the hard work and they're there as staff. Okay, right? press the pause yeah. button. Yes. Just for a second. Guides. All right, I think some people, this might be a new concept for some people listening and, and viewing. So um, I'm just looking around now. Guides. Um, where are they? <laughs> Who are they? Uh, do you have the same ones as me? Um, do, does everybody have them? Oh, million and one questions. Just Give yes. us a quick potted history, if you would, uh, on, okay. on, on what is quick a guide. History. You said you only wanted this to be a half an hour. <laughs> I do entire episodes on these things. Um, so the, the the basic premise is most people think, most people know the concept of a guardian angel, sure. right? And so, you know, you we all have a guardian angel. We all have guides. Uh, the guardian angel's job is to keep you safe. A guide's job is to keep you on track right? We come into this life with, with intentions for what we want to do in the yeah. lifetime and our guides are there to help us along the way sure. to keep us focused and, and moving in the direction that we had chosen for this life. And if you want a good story about that, it's called The Alchemist by, <laughs> by, Paolo <laughs> by the way. Absolutely. Yes. That's a perfect story for it. Mm. Um, and the, the, purpose of your guides is to to support you and you know a lot of people especially when i first started oh my god when i first started i was so confrontational with my guides they would tell me to do something i was like i don't want to do that you go you know no you're done get out of here i'm i'm not doing that screw that no uh -uh. <laughs> and and much worse curse words than that too i'm trying to be kind here <laughs> but, yes, but thank you. I was, very sensitive is Yes, I could tell. So I was, um, I, I was really not very open to their instructions when I, when I first stepped back onto the path after, uh, after having taken a break when I was married, because mm -hmm. I married an, an, an atheist. So, um, Oh, that yeah, was a I good stepped, match. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I stepped out. Um, and, uh, when I stepped back in, I was just like, mm, ar, 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 crank, crank. I don't want to hear it. And, and over time I learned that when I listened, life went well. And when I didn't listen, life did not go so well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, I'll get used to it. It'll be okay. And now I'm just like, Hey, this is awesome. Thank you. You know? And so in the alchemist, particularly the story by Paolo Kahlo, the, one of the key themes is listening to your heart. And I'm guessing in a way that the guides will speak through the heart as well as that is one of the places where they will, because the heart already knows all the right things to do. Yeah. That is the theory of, of the alchemist that the heart knows these things, but the heart needs guidance. It, it needs to be kept on the straight and narrow it, it, it can be, sometimes it can be treacherous. Sometimes it can fall back into fear. It can do all these different things. So I get that. I get that. All right. Um, I would, I would actually say that the heart knows where you're supposed to end up. The heart knows good. who you're mm. supposed to be. Right. Mm. And so when we get off track, we feel our heart feels like it's breaking. Right. When mm. we, when we, it feels like it's dying, like the world is closing on it. When you step out of your path, you can really feel it when you let go of your dream, right? Yes. Um, and I would say that your guides actually work through intuition more often. Um, so they tend to, to be the, oh, maybe you ought to take this with you right now. Or, oh, I just thought of so-and-so and then they call, right? So, so your guides tend to work more through intuition than through the heart per se. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fabulous. Um, we're in the lab. I've got set various concoctions going on. I've got this one, which is, no, I don't think we're doing that one. I've got this one. Yeah. Um, this is a, a really, really uh, quite concentrated thing. And I need a few more ingredients. I'm trying to um, concoct a potion that's called empowerment. Uh, first of all, I'm not quite sure what kind of empowerment it's going to be, but in your understanding of MPAM, what do I need to inject into this particular liquid right now? 
Well, emotional safety and individuation. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> those those okay. are the things. That's that's empowerment right there. So right. And yeah. what is it what is it gonna look like though when when I've added those things and I've mixed them up and I've and I've drunk my potion, what um how will that then manifest differently in my life going forward? What could I expect to see that I maybe didn't see before? Well, so there's a, a wide variety of things, actually. It, it, when, you, when you step into empowerment, it actually cascades across every aspect of your life. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you don't feel afraid to confront someone about something. Um, which, you know, sometimes that could feel before sure. like dying. You're going to die. Yeah. Like exactly. you're going to kill them at the same time. Right. It's both. Mm -hmm. And um, so you, you are able to ask for help and receive help grace, gracefully and graciously without feeling like, you know, you're going to be indebted forever mm -hmm. that you are able to feel comfortable in your own skin. And there's a sense of peace that, that permeates your beingness, that you're not consciously anxious and worried all the time. Right. That you just have a trust in the universe that everything's going to work out. Even if it doesn't look so great right now, like, eh, it'll be fine, right? There's that, that trust that, that things will work out and everything is as it should be. And there's a, a sense of um, feeling like you are more solid like you're not subject to the whims of other people's emotions that you are able to have your own space in the world that you don't have to give space to everyone else that you don't mm -hmm. have to give way for everyone else that you don't have to apologize for your existence right mm -hmm. that you don't have to turn yourself into a chameleon to make yourself acceptable to everyone right that you can be loved for being you not for what you do Oh, I think I've heard that before. <laughs> oh, no, it's not in this book. No, no, no. It's, <laughs> it's my mantra. You know my yeah. mantra. And that is it. Absolutely. Yeah. We are loved for who we are and not for what we can do. Critical. We're almost, I can't believe it. Boy, did yes, we might have to come back and do this again, Kelly, at some I, point. I, yeah, I think I think we, we episode have a lot to talk about. episode two <laughs> before too long. Um, is there a favorite quote, or is there a passage from anything you've read, or anything else that, that you'd love to inspire the listeners and viewers with today to to send us away um, before they all go rushing to um, kellysparta.com dot com and <laughs> signing up for your two three and a half year course. Um, <laughs> They only have to sign up for four months. That's all. Oh, okay. That's the first oh, commitment. Four okay. months. Four. So, um, so there's a thing in uh, the law of attraction that they talk about a lot, which is the cursed how, right? Hmm. It's the it's the thing that people get stuck in when they're trying to do law of attraction work, which is that they they know what they want, but because they don't know how they're going to get there, they just can't commit to it. Oh, and interesting. Okay. They, they don't trust the process to figure it out and they're always trying to you know figure it out and engineer it right and so this quote is for you who want to let go of the cursed house so that you can manifest better and and uh it, it's one that i came up with a few years ago that i just love it's we provide the destination and the motivation the universe provides the navigation mm. Do you want to say that again? We provide the destination and the motivation. The universe provides the navigation. So if we, so, we know what we want. Yep. And we've got the passion to make it happen. To keep taking steps forward. Yeah. The universe will choose the route pretty much. Yes. And if we follow the path that we're given, if we keep doing the motivation, we keep taking the steps, even if we don't know what the next one is and we don't understand why this one's here, if we keep saying yes and following forward, which is where that, that cosmic yes girl thing comes in, um, if we keep saying yes and stepping forward, the universe will bring us to the thing that we've asked for. So we're all going to take a moment and say a very, very big yes. 
everybody. Let's all do it. Yes. Let's, yes. Let's say yes today. So that's our meditation for today, everybody, is the word yes. Yes. I know where I want to go and I have the passion and commitment to get there and I trust the universe is going to take me to exactly that spot. Kelly, I knew this was going to be awesome. I, I'm, I wasn't wrong. And That's I know we're going to get yet. loads of comments. <laughs> People are going to come pouring in saying, oh, when are you going to get Kelly back? Well, let's get her back, please, you know, before time. Well, you don't have to wait because Kelly actually has her own podcast as well, which is called the Spirit Sherpa Podcast. Is that correct? Yeah. It's it, just Spirit Sherpa in your podcast uh, app, channel, or whatever, you can yeah. search, or you can go to spiritsherpapodcast.com either way. Okay. okay. Um, it's amazing. It's had 100,000 downloads, and there's a fantastic episode on there where she's interviewing somebody called Colm Holland. I, oh, Absolutely. I, I can't recommend <laughs> And it was so good. We did a double-length double, double length episode because we a just kept episode. talking. That's just why like I need to have you back. <laughs> He wouldn't, he just wouldn't shut up. That was the, <laughs> I just wouldn't let him shut up. There's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> always, always a pleasure. Kelly, thank you so much. Um, sending lots of love and blessings for your work, your amazing ministry. Thank you. Thank you from on behalf of everybody. Um, I've met people who've been on your course and they, they cannot stop saying enough wonderful things about you. So um, this is awesome. Thank you for taking the time out today. Uh, and, and sharing me. those thoughts and thank you everybody for joining us and listening in and watching um this episode of the the alchemy lab and i'm just going to say cheers everybody i'm just going to take my um my my potion of empowerment um i hope you now know how you can create your own potion of empowerment thanks everybody thanks for listening see you next time